and welcome to Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you informed and aware of everything that's happening in the world of faith and family films. I should probably add TV because my guest today at this point has nothing to do with films. He's really more into television, but you'll, you'll find out what I mean by that here shortly. Uh, Tony Pasco is a multifaceted composer, arranger, songwriter, and sound designer whose successful track record speaks for itself. His reputation for high quality compositions, music supervision placements, and songwriting exemplify his well-rounded knowledge of music and its ability to add color to any scene soundtrack or ad placement. A critically acclaimed musician sought after music supervisor, Tony proves to be an impactful composer and dedicated partner that adds value to every composition and project he touches. Tony was one of the music writers for A&E's number one rated TV show, see what I'm talking about, Duck Dynasty, and is now producer of a new series, Bean Martelli, which is available on Parables TV. Tony's latest venture combines his music career and his TV career together in a new web series called Tony's Backstage Pass. Tony, my friend, how in the world are you today, man? Hey, nice to see you. Thank you for having me on. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's 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 a pleasure. Um, been something that I've you know been holding up on because the, again the show has always been about filmmakers and, and what they're doing in filmmaking, um, but uh, I don't know. My show seems to be taking a little bit of a different uh, turn in here and there. Um, I recently had an attorney. Now he did have something to do with films though, um, but nonetheless I figured you know uh, you've produced uh, one of the shows that we have on Parables, so why not include television, right? Well, thank you. And, and you know, just I, I uh, just not to mention, I just did a, a soundtrack for a documentary film that just came out a few months ago there you um, go. called Back to China Beach, which is the story of um, in Vietnam of all the surfers and, wow. and what happened in the story and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and they all this, they all go back, of course, back to right. Vietnam. And, and China Beach there in Vietnam. So I did the soundtrack for, oh. for that. So I guess it's my, my movie. My you're movie there. Thing. You're there. You're, and pretty <laughs> soon you're going to be, uh, you're going to have to do, you know, get involved in a full on drama feature of some sort. Oh, I don't, yeah, I got to tell you. <laughs> TV, TV, if it's anything like TV, it. Eh? I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, let's uh, take this first segment and learn a little bit about you. How you got started in this industry in the first place? Uh, I have to credit my dad. Um, he he was a professional musician in in Chicago, and um, and I kind of came up, you know, th with him with his bands and his ministry and everything. And he was a professional musician, touring musician back in the '60s and stuff. And then he retired from all that, um, and then went to the church and he became a Christian songwriter and, and, you know, was very active um, in our church growing up. And he used to always say to me, the people you play for Saturday night are the same ones you play for Sunday morning. <laughs> and he just, he, to him, he didn't miss it. it, it performing was performing. Music was mm -hmm. music. So I kind of came up in, in, you know, following him and his, him, his whole kind of, you know, getting me into lessons and, and being very strict on me and very, you know, at times adamant um, about my education and my music education and, and my spiritual education. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of how I came up. And then when I went out on my own and I went to college um, for music, I had that foundation. And I think that's never left me ever since. Wow. You know, I, th I think that's something that sometimes is missing in families where the parents are not really passing on, if you will, their, um, their, their calling, their particular calling. They're not passing on that mantle down to their, to their own children. Uh, and, you know, it's tough right now with the fact that both mom and dad have to work. Uh, and sometimes they're not, you know, they're, they're not home to, to do that. Uh, and when they do get home, they're just a little too tired to do it. But would you say that's a very important thing for parents to really consider? Oh, absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll tell you one thing about my dad. I went to gigs with my dad. My dad, mm -hmm. when I came along, uh, I, he, I was his roadie. I was his tour manager. I was, oh, his, yes. his, his, you know, everything sound man. He taught me, you know, um, that if I wanted to do this, I, and at the time I didn't know I wanted to do this for a living, of course, mm -hmm. but as a little kid, I just wanted to hang out with him and he made it important to me. And, and it was his example. 
So what my advice would be to a lot of parents is you don't you have to lead by example. Telling them mm -hmm. is one thing, but showing them you, you don't have to. You, you know, it, it just it's you know you don't have to say the words. You know what I mean? Their right. your impression will stay with them. I mean, it did for my dad where instead of me going to sleep over at a friend of mine's house, you know, I, I'm, you know, at the Ramada with my dad. At a right. gig on a Saturday <laughs> night. And, and I was this little weird 10 year old, you know, telling the sound guy, you know, well, they, you know, we have two mics here and a guitar player and a keyboard player. And, and I knew everything. I was so into it. I, I loved it. And, and I think my dad saw that and he yeah. kind of encouraged it. But like he said, to me very early on because I, I wanted to be like Jimi Hendrix and I wanted to be, you know, like Van Halen and all this stuff. And he said to me, he goes, rock stars die. Musicians have careers. Oh, be wow. a musician. I'm training <laughs> you to be a musician, not a rock star. And I've had a, a very good mu uh, career mm -hmm. as a musician. <laughs> yep. No <laughs> rock star yet. To be like. <laughs> no, I, I, I could have gone down that road, but again, <laughs> It's that it's that yeah. foundation he left with me um, early on that made yeah. me make different choices. You know, when I had my kids growing up, also I was involved in TV at the time. I worked for a very large network called Trinity Broadcasting Network. And I used to bring my kids along on almost everything I did, a lot of the remotes. Uh, so when I was at a studio in New York for seven years, they would come. They, they thought they ran the place. Uh, now, did they follow in the career path? I'm going to say probably not 100%. One of my daughters, not at all. She's, she's just not into it at all. My oldest daughter did get involved with me and is even now involved with me in some way with what I do. Uh, and my son actually become, became a, a, a camera operator and, and did, did very well. Uh, started doing some shows out in Hollywood even. Uh, but then he, uh, he responded to what I think is a higher calling. No, I don't, I don't mean a pastor, by the way. <laughs> this is a different higher calling, and that was a military higher calling. So he, yeah, he became a military person, uh, actually you know, uh, joined the ranger program and, and uh, took several tours uh, overseas as a, as a ranger. So uh, can he still get back in? I, I suppose, but somehow what he did already is such ingrained in him that television is a bit boring to him. But I digress. Uh, we don't need to get into that, but we do need to get into this. We're going to take a little break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the program that uh, that uh, you produced. That this is how we met, and we now have it on Parables TV, and that's uh, me and Martelli. All right. All righty, folks. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Faith on Film. We are here with uh, Tony Pasco, who is a musician involved now in TV and apparently now even moving into film, at least a documentary for now. But I expect he'll probably be heading into the dramatic film industry soon. I don't know. I, I, maybe I'm just prophesying over you here, Tony. Uh, but listen, Tony. Um, so this is yeah. how we met. I, I actually have only known you for maybe a year and a half or so. Uh, you called me and talked to me about a show idea that you had. You had actually done a pilot program, uh, and I, of course, absolutely fell in love with it. Uh, this happened after you uh, had, I guess, finished your stint with uh, Duck Dynasty because they had gone off the air. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, being, being a part of Duck Dynasty, um, what led me into being Martelli was when I met this family, the Martellis, they're a big, loud Italian family with this big business. And I just spent the last, you know, what, seven years or whatever, writing music for a TV show about a big, loud family with their own business. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and also, uh, 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 they had this faith connection, you know, and they were very good people and faithful people and stuff. And I, I can tell you, when I was a part of that show, The Duck Dynasty, thing you know it was just huge i mean none of us expected that thing to yeah. become what it did and but i can't tell you how many times people would come up to me i had a lady in walmart in the middle of the aisle just come up to me and go why aren't there more shows on tv like duck dynasty why aren't there more families like that why you know i love their faith i love that they pray i love that they have this you know there needs to be more of that and and at the time i'm just writing music for the show i'm just like hey don't <laughs> you know you're preaching to the choir but i have no control over any of that so when that ended and went into syndication, which it is now, we're all over the world with mm -hmm. Duck Dynasty, 
um, I, I moved to Pensacola, Florida, and I was introduced to this family. And, and when I met them, and I'm Italian, so of course we had this connection right away, as you can tell, I talk with my hands all the time. And uh, like they, you know, like they do. And we, so we hit it off um, instantly. But what I noticed was about this family is there were all these similarities to the Robertsons. When I met the Robertsons, I saw them off camera being exactly how they were on camera. And I thought, wow, what a rarity that is. That is mm -hmm. so cool. And then I meet this family and I'm like, can lightning strike twice maybe? I don't know. Why am I being led to meet these people? And and they were faith-filled and funny and, you know, drama-filled and that <laughs> crazy things are happening, as you know, by being around them. And I thought, I just have to, I, you know, and I'm not a filmmaker or anything. So I just, I thought, you know, if all I had to do is point a camera at them, edit it down to a half hour, just pick the best crazy that they do, you know, or the funniest stuff or whatever, the heartfelt stuff, mm -hmm. because they have this great balance. And I thought, you know, you can't just have them be crazy all the time without them being, you know, you see the other side, yeah. the family side where they hug and they cry and they laugh and, and that there's, they're, they're, they are a real daughter and, and father and, and grandfather and grandmother. And there's this hierarchy and then this business that they're running. I thought, well, I'll just make, and then this is, and I, this, I, this is how I pitched it to you, if you remember. I have an Italian duck dynasty, <laughs> and you remember that. And yep. I said, I think you like the music because it's mine from mm -hmm. the, the, that duck dynasty into their show. But they're different people; they're their own people, but equally as as entertaining and as funny and as endearing. Yes. I've never seen a family so willing to throw it all out there. I could never do it. I could never ask my family, hey, let's, as crazy as my family is, I could never say, let me put you on camera and let's take our most, you know, our, our, our personal moments and let's put them on TV and let's, you be you and you, you know, but they have this ability where when I would turn the camera on, a lot of people, their their personalities go away when, when as soon as the camera's on or have little personalities and then the camera co goes on and all of a sudden they're they have this huge personality that's so phony as you know the martellis don't care if cameras are on they don't care if they're off they don't okay. care if they're to the right to the left they're going to do what they're going to do they're going to say what they're going to say and you just better capture it and edit it somehow so that's what i did and that's what the whole first season ended up becoming and mm -hmm. We're just so blessed and just so grateful to be a part of Parables and 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 get this out there and and show the world this really cool family, this really great family. Yeah. And you know, I did have the privilege of of going down to Pensacola and meeting them, and they were just such an amazing, wonderful family. They, I felt at some point like I was a Martelli myself. I mean, they they take you in and make you a part of the family. You know, you're not an outsider. And uh, so I, I felt like I needed to change my name to Isaac Martelli. Uh, but uh, no, they they really were they really were terrific. And of course, seeing what you did was amazing. Well, thank you. And and they ask about you all the time. What well, you're exactly right. When you're in their fold, you're a Martelli. <laughs> you know what I mean. And you're just that's a, that's a rarity. You know. And and of course, they've had issues and problems with people that do take advantage mm -hmm. of those kinds of things. But you know what? <sighs> It's such a great quality, and it's yeah. something I really want to get show other people that you can be kind, and you can be faithful, and but you can be business savvy, and you can have a big business, and your family, and you can work with your family and argue, and be as crazy as you want to be. But then at the end of the day, you have this result, and there's this love yeah. that you have with your family, and that's and that's them. I didn't have to write that. I don't, you know, I call myself, you know, I directed the pilot. That's just entitled. I don't know you direct the Martell Val. You don't direct Val. I, Val I'm, walks on. I'm familiar goes, with Val. <laughs> right? And Val will say, so what's this? So what are we trying to accomplish here? And you tell her, well, it, you know, we're trying to talk about your business. Okay, go, hurry up. And she's gone. And then all of a sudden you look back at the footage and you're and you find yourself laughing and crying right along yes. with her you know and that's a that's a rare gift that they have and that's a gift they're willing to share with with the rest of the world i i think it's wonderful yes. and i'm very i'm very lucky and honored to be a part of that show and i'm telling you right now if you want to look at that show just go to parables.tv 
um, and sign up. You don't have to pay anything, and you can watch these shows. And uh, I highly recommend you watch them. There's some great poignant moments in there. Yeah, you know, Tony's been talking about how crazy and wild they are, and they, they are, but there's some really, uh, some really intimate moments in there, I think, that'll really bless your heart. So. They really like they open themselves up. Like yes. I said, you will see things that this is a real family. They hadn't yeah. had a silver spoon. They weren't just handed this thing. They've yeah. worked very hard, and they've had many things happen to them, like in any family. Yeah. And some, I mean, I wanted to create a show where you could laugh, you know, that mm -hmm. belly laugh, and then be crying in, in the next one. And I think we accomplished. Well, there's another show that you're creating now. Uh, it's not necessarily for parables. It's something that you're doing for the Internet. Uh, but when we come back, we're going to talk about that and learn more about your Tony. What is it? Tony's Backstage Pass, right? Pass. Yep. Sounds good, folks. Don't go away. We're going to be right back. Welcome back to Faith on Film. We're here with Tony Pasco. And Tony, you're going to share with us a little bit about a new project that you're working on called Tony's Backstage Pass. What is that about? Well, you know, with, with the, everything going on in the world today, you know, when we had the, the shutdown and everybody had to kind of stay home, we had to shut down our production with being Martelli. And, uh, you know, we we're just sitting around. I had a whole camera crew and everyone's like, Tony, let's do a music. They've been bugging me to do a music project. Uh -huh. And I just didn't care for any of their ideas and, and I didn't want to be on camera. I like being behind camera. I don't like, it's hard being on camera. I didn't care. Oh, tell me about it. But, right? Yeah. But I ended up having a conversation because all my musician friends were all sitting at home. Nobody can mm -hmm. tour. You know, the whole music industry shut down right now. And I had a conversation. I'm like, this should be the show. I should just do this little web series where all I do is talk to friends of mine in the music industry and teach people what actually goes on behind the scenes. You know, 75% of a rock concert happens behind the stage that right. you don't even get to see. The concert itself is just a small portion of, of the whole thing. I've worked on a lot of these big shows and tours and I've worked with a lot of these bands in my career. And I'm always amazed where it's like, man, the show is the afterthought. Yeah. If you knew what happened <laughs> the whole day before, I mean, so that's why I was kind of like, this show could be that, you know what I mean? So we all decided, I started calling friends of mine and we Zoom and we do all that kind of stuff. And I entered, I interviewed some of my friends like Dave Ellison from Megadeth and my buddy Tom Weber, who is Eddie Van Halen's guitar tech. People don't know what a guitar tech does <laughs> and what his daily yeah. life is. So I interviewed them and that's what this show is. And, and then I play and I talk about how you write music for TV. And so it's all... You know, it's all in this little web series, and I have a website, and you know, it's a you just sign up. It's a monthly thing, and uh, we're having fun with it. It's just a little side thing, you know. Not it being Martelli, you know, we're getting kind of back to our lives a little bit mm -hmm. and ramping up. So what we have some hopefully some new things, maybe a season two coming eventually with with being Martelli, and uh, you know, but I'm having fun with this little thing on the side, the Tony's backstage pass, and and I'm kind of liking being on on camera. I'm getting used to it. I, I don't love it. But I'm getting, I'm getting used to it. <laughs> I know, I know what you mean completely. And you know what? It's kind of cool that this this COVID pand COVID pandemic thing has actually birthed a lot of new things. You know, so um, I don't want to say it's a good thing we got COVID, but it's a good thing of how we've reacted to it. A, a lot of us have reacted by by doing things that we kind of maybe had in the back of our minds, but now we were kind of forced to do it because there was nothing else we could do, right? Yeah, and a lot of my friends, you know, we, you know, they're off all this year. Looks mm -hmm. like most of them, you know, touring is not going to probably yeah. come back next year, or at least half of next year. Um, you know, a lot of people are working on new music and stuff, so they're all sitting at home. So I thought I'd take advantage of it, and I start calling my friends up, and that's what the show has been. And we've been getting some offers, so hopefully you'll start seeing more of this. Uh, you can go to it's um, the, the website. You can go to TonyBackstage.com. Or go to my Facebook or my website, you know, TonyPasco.com, and uh, just check out what I got going on. It's just a fun little thing that I, we're doing on the side, but you never know, you know. It I, yeah, I, think, to me. I think those those fun little things are can actually be very exciting to to watch. Um, I totally understand what you're talking about, how the, the concert is really the very end of what is a huge long process. I mean, it's the same thing with, with television. I remember we would spend an entire day, sometimes two, preparing for a show that would go for two hours. You know, and, right. and it was all that stuff that, I mean, actually it's all that stuff that I used to really love, all the preparation. Um, once we would do the show, 
I would, it, uh, my wife used to tell me, wow, you, you're into depressed mode now, you know? And I was like, I understood what she was saying, because yeah, I was like, this is, this is the end now. The, the show is the end for me. It was all that preparing that was the fun stuff. So I'm glad you're doing that. That actually is going to be a fun show to watch. So, yeah, you know, and, and you'll get this, a lot of the stories because these are the people that never you never see. They're behind mm -hmm. the curtain, yeah. you know, so the tour managers and, 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 you know, the backup people and the roadies. And, and I know these people and they're great people and they're funny and they have good stories. I mean, I was talking to a buddy of mine. Um, we were talking about when we were out with Poison and, you know, um, the whole guitar rig went down and we blew tubes and we had to run. I forget where we were, even what town. We had to find a music store and find who had tubes and we're driving in this town. We didn't even know about the fine tubes just so we could get the amps working. And, you know, like 20 minutes, I think it was like 25, 30 minutes before curtain, before the, the, the show was supposed to go. Wow. You know, we had to get the tubes and then uh, no one knew, though. The whole <laughs> concert went on. You know, all this funny stuff that went behind the scenes. Wow. Well, that's exciting. And I really hope all you folks that are wa uh, watching this program today will go check that out and just uh, learn a little bit more about what happens behind the scenes of all these concerts. Tony, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, this is this fun. This was a fun, a fun time today. Thank you for thinking of me. I appreciate it. You bet. Folks, don't go away. We're going to be right back. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget, if you want to write me, simply write me at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. I sure would love to hear from you. Uh, of course, you can always follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. And don't forget to check out Parables TV, a place where you can watch a lot of great content for your entire family. We add new content every month. So even if you checked it out before, check it out again. And don't forget, it's free. All you got to do is register at parables.tv. That's parables.tv. Well, that's all the time I have for today. Until next week, take care. <laughs>